So we've got our data in a CSV file and it's damping over time as you can see here. We've read it in with our Python script. We're plotting it with red circles. Let's take a closer look at a couple peaks, maybe four of these peaks. See how they look. I can see I've got quite a few data points around each peak. And we want to be able to figure out where are the peaks so we can figure out what is the time between each peak. And then we also want to figure out how quickly do these things decrease. Just looking at four, it looks basically linear, but it's going to be something a little bit more complicated than that. It'll be a negative exponential. So let's see how to do that. Looking at my data, I've got my x and my t split already. I would like to make a list of the peaks. I'll call it peaks. And you might remember, in contrast to an array, a list is just what it sounds like. It's a list of objects. This will be a list of numbers. And if I use empty braces like this, it means my list is empty. Why is that? Well, I'd like this script to work on any data set, and I don't know how many peaks there are. In fact, I have to measure the peaks. So if you can't know in advance, sometimes you need to make an empty list and then append that list or add to it as you make discoveries. So we're going to figure out a way to characterize, to diagnose the phenomenon of having a peak. Let's look at just one peak here. In the local neighborhood of this peak, it looks to me like this is the biggest one. So what does it mean to be biggest? It means you're bigger than all your neighbors. Suppose you're bigger than one, two, three, four, five data points to the left and one, two, three, four, five data points to the right. That sounds like a peak to me. Let's take a look at a couple other data sets. It's always good to examine your data set, explore it. Well, this peak is definitely bigger than its five neighbors to the right and its five neighbors to the left. So that sounds like a condition we can search for. In our script here, I'm saying that my number of neighbors that I want to search will be, I said five. That seems reasonable for this, but we can experiment. It's better to get something kind of working and then tweak it than to worry about what the best number should be. Now I'm going to go through the data, so I'll be saying for i in range from, well, I can't start at zero in my data set because I need five neighbors to the left. So I'm going to start at n and go up to the length of x minus n. And that should tell me uh, that should be all the points that I can apply this algorithm to. So that might mean I miss a peak at the very beginning or end, but hopefully you'll see that'll work out all right. So when do we add to our list or when do we append our list? We append our list if we meet the following condition. We want to know if the max of x from i minus n to i plus n this is a built-in function max, it just it returns the maximum of an array. If that's equal, and remember when we're testing equality in Python, we use a double equal sign. The single equals is an assignment operator, and this is a test for equality. Double equals equals x of i, then append the list. How do we append the list? We'll say peaks dot append. This dot notation says that this list has a method associated with it because the list is an object. Objects know about methods that they possess and this append method is tagging one onto the end. What do we want to tag onto the end? We want to tag the index where we have found the peak. So can we give that a try? Let's take a look running the code. And if I say peaks now over here in my console, I have a list. So what will happen if I add to my plot, plot t of peaks, since peaks is a list of indices, and x is a list of indices, uh, peaks is a list of indices I can use for my x. And let's use uh, black squares to identify these peaks. 
And let's make our marker size a little bit bigger. Marker size equals 12. So when I run this again, what I expect to see are black squares on the peaks of my data. There's one. Let's zoom back out. Ah, I found peaks here. But this is not a peak, this is a trough. What happened there? Can we see? Let's zoom in. Ah, so I have a cluster of data on each side of this little guy, which means he actually is a local peak. Let's clear that figure next time we run the script. And I think I can get around that problem if I make this parameter a little bit bigger, maybe 8. This is the kind of tweaking you have to do in data science sometimes to make your algorithm a little bit sharper. That did it. So now I'm finding only positive peaks. And I'd like to see how quickly those peaks decay. So I need to find an equation that will fit just those. Because remember, if we go back to our Desmos, we're looking for, let's turn down the damping a little bit. We're looking for several things. We already know how to find omega and we're looking for a way to find this damping coefficient, b. And it's going to be just, let's plot that function too and see what it is. When we're finding that damping coefficient, it's going to be the shape of this function up here. And can we see what that function is? Well, we can say y equals a exp of minus bx. Let's take out the cosine part. And look, that fits right on the peaks. So we're looking for the value of b that makes that go through the peaks. Just out of curiosity, what would happen if I had y equals negative a exp of bx? What do you think it'll be? That's right, that fits on the bottom here. So we have an envelope going along the top and bottom that modulates the size of this. This amplitude modulation is what we're talking about with AM radio, although we don't just decay it, we encode the shape of a voice signal in in an envelope that can decay and grow over time. Going back to our code, we want to take these data, t of peaks and x of peaks, and we want to fit them. I don't know how to fit decaying data, exponentially decaying data, but there is a tool I can use in Python to fit linear data. So suppose I have data that looks like uh, y equals e to the minus b x. Is there a way to undo this e to the business? There is. I can take the log of y and then the log of natural log that is log of minus of e to the minus p x. Log is the opposite of e to the so this is just minus b x. So the log of y is equal to minus bx. This is a lot better because this is a linear function and I have some idea how to fit polynomials. In fact there's a built-in function. You might be wondering how is it this guy knows all these built-in functions and how long would it take me to find them? Well that is where Google is your friend. When you want to fit data you can just Google how do I fit linear data? How do I fit exponential data in Python? And there you can learn a lot. I'm just passing on things that I have found. So we know when we're looking for a linear function, it looks like y equals mx plus b. I'm sure that you all remember that. Where m is the slope and b is the y-intercept. So if we're graphing the data here, we got the slope, which we know is going to be a negative number in our case, and then the y-intercept where it hits the axis. So we're basically transforming our negative exponential here into a linear function by taking its log. So I have a, a function called polyfit and it takes x and y data, that's dependent and independent variable, and then a degree. In this case we're looking for a linear function, so my degree is going to be 1. I could also fit quadratics if I made this 2. And it's going to give me two outputs, and those outputs in this case, why do I have two outputs? Because a linear function has a slope and an intercept. If it were quadratic, how many outputs would I have? You know, you'd have y equals ax squared plus bx plus c, so we would have three outputs. Let's take a look at how that works. 
since the outputs will be m and b, I can say m comma b equals polyfit of what am I fitting? I'm fitting not t and x, but t of peaks and x of peaks. We're only fitting those points. And in fact, we're not fitting just those points. We're fitting the log of x of peaks. Let's make sure our parentheses match. Green highlighting here showing me I've closed those parentheses, and now I've closed the outer parentheses. Let's print m and b just to see what we find. Polyfit takes three arguments. What did I forget? I forgot that I want a linear function, 1. So I'm getting negative 0 0.08. That's good. Let's see if we plot that. Can I plot that envelope function? Let's plot t of peaks and then b times exp of negative m x of peaks. Oh. We don't want x, we want t there. These are a function of t not x. To see how well this works, let's add another figure. We'll make the figure that we're already making called figure 1. And we'll add another figure, figure 2. If I know I'm going to run this over and over again, I always want to clear my figure. Now I've got m and b are the slope and intercept for my polyfit, and the thing I'm plotting I want to fit to is t of peaks. And the log, log in Python means natural log, the log of x of peaks. some green circles there. Let's watch those. I see that I have basically a negative linear function, which is what we wanted, and here I have some decay off of the linear trend, so that's looking not quite right, which is probably because when our data's amplitude gets smaller, the influence of noise is going to be a bigger part of the signal, part of the, not the signal, but part of the data set. But here, this looks quite linear. Let's see how our fit looks. The fit is going to be plot t. It's still going to be the same t of peaks. And what is this function going to be? It's going to be the slope m times t of peaks. Plus b. So that's a y equals m x plus b. And t is our horizontal axis variable, the dependent independent variable. So this should give us a linear fit. Let's use a blue line to fit that. Take a look. Not at that graph, the other graph. And there's our linear fit, which looks pretty good.